Good morning and welcome to Quilt Chat. We're coming to you live from the AQS studio here in Paducah, Kentucky. And we hope that you'll join in our conversation. Feel free to ask us some questions. We'll get to as many of them as we can. Um, but I think we're gonna start off with Anne because you have a brand new magazine. I'm very excited. We are, uh, you will soon be receiving if you are a member of AQS, uh, the September issue, which will come out just about the 1st of August, uh, of AQ Magazine, American Quilter. And we are looking forward to uh, lots of great patterns. We have seven patterns in this issue. Got that, Alan? Good picture? Good. Because I want everybody <laughs> to see what it looks like because they might be looking for it on their newsstand as well. If you're not a member, uh, you can certainly find it on the newsstand. Uh, we have among the patterns uh, some really nice choices for fall, including October afternoon, is which is right here and also right here on the table. So uh, that's a, a nice, fairly quick project, I believe. I love these Hoffman um, Batiks. It's really nice, Those and there's a kit available for this at Shop AQS, oh, cool. too. And do you know what I liked about this pattern? Is I think I could do this quilting. I think I could, this too. Would, this is, is it's just a meander across, and there's no real pattern to it. Uh, so this would be a good pattern for a beginner mm -hmm. to start machine quilting and on. And it makes it look like the wind's blowing those leaves, doesn't it? It, it sure does. It's very it's effective, kinda, but very simple. It mm -hmm. gives me the impression of a uh, wood grain, kind of. You know, just that the, the way that grain and it's a variegated thread, so it does give that flowy feel too. Mm -hmm. Yes, and it always That's makes nice. the stakes hot. So we see. <laughs> <laughs> and while we're on the subject of quilts that we have right here, uh, we also have a pattern for the quilt that's behind us. It's yes. Rising Star. It's beautiful. A quilt by Lauren Palmer. That first one. This one is by Emily Cross. So uh, look for those and many more coming up in the September issue. Of oh, American Quilter. There's also a really cool bag in there. Oh, yes, there yes. is. That uh, flip and zip. Yes. And it's a nice big bag. It looks it really is. nice and, and large. And it has right a shoulder here. strap. So it doesn't have like the typical purse strap. It has a like a one-sided backpack kind of right. thing. Right. I'm going to try that one. That's a bag by Brenda Miller. I love that. She's from Canada. It looks so simple. Wonderful bag maker. And it looks like it'll hold mm -hmm. a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Doesn't it? Well, one of the fun things about those patterns is that they all use half square triangles. The one mm -hmm. behind us uses them in different sizes, and we've got some small ones here in, in this particular quilt. Uh, and so Betsy, I know you and I don't do our half squares the same way, so how do you do a half square triangle? No, I usually do the typical draw a line from corner to corner, so a quarter inch on both sides. And then you cut on that line you drew, and you get two half square triangles. And so I mm -hmm. just, then, and I always oversize, and cut down and that's, so that they're perfect. That's the way that it is described for these patterns in the magazine. Yeah. And usually our free patterns on um, AQS blog, we usually use that method as well. What do you do, Bonnie? Well, you know, last week we did these little quilts that the, at the Quilt Museum during Quilt Chat. Yes. And you can see that we've got yellow and white and green and white in here. So I did it so that they could paper piece it. Oh, and that meant that I could put my two pieces, and this is a time saver, I could put my two pieces of fabric together, right sides together, and then I could cut my squares, and you know, then the fabric kind of sticks to itself. Mm -hmm. And that's, okay. that's when, a great tip, because that so, saves so much time. So if you were doing, you were doing it, you would have drawn a line and sewn yes. on either side. Yes. Well, I developed it so that we could cut eight at a time. Wonderful. So this would be your half square triangle, sewing on either on either side. So it's the exact same method, just in multiples. <laughs> yes, right. and, and what this does, if you follow the numbers that I put on this one, this is number one, then you sew the inside of the next seam, and you're able to sew it all in one single sewing. And that's so fun. Well, and so... That's I've, amazing. So you, you don't even have to stop your stitching. No. You just keep going around. So you get the whole around. Done. Isn't that yes. great? And so I've made eight that's all at fast. once. And you'll notice that I have left a margin out here. Again, like Betsy, I overcut it. 
Uh, and then I've trimmed that off. And so now I'm just going to take my scissors, and if I were at home, I'd do this with a rotary cutter. I was going to say, I don't think I've ever seen somebody cut fabric with scissors before, Bonnie. <laughs> <laughs> Not much anyway, no. do we? <laughs> Not all right. That. And so you're going to cut on all of the solid lines here. The dashed lines are the ones you sew on. And when we cut here, all right, and so now, when you open this up, here you go. Perfect. All right. So how do you make it easier tearing off all that paper? Because that's a lot of paper tearing. Well, it is. And uh, I showed the ladies this last week because what I do, first of all, I have reduced my stitch length to 1.8. Normally it's like 2.2. And that just makes the stitching closer together so that when you do tear the paper off, you don't have gaps where the thread oh, was, the, the yes. paper width was in there. Right. But if you just take and press the paper back on itself, all right, so now you can... Oh, so you just crease it and it perforates. If you right crease it, it helps and now, look what, it, now sure. look what happens because when you get ready to do the next one, Boom. it just comes right off. That is wonderful. Great tip, Now, Bonnie. I also will tell you, because I sewed these last night, so we'd have them today, uh, and it got to where when I was sewing around, it didn't quite end where I needed it to be. So I changed my stitch length from 1.8 to 1.9, and now when I got from dot to dot, it stopped perfectly. Stopped. That's so, a great on your point. turn. Yes, yeah. yeah. Good. So Good if, idea. if it doesn't, if you have to move your needle, just, you know, just a tiny bit. <laughs> yes. Well, then, then just change your stitch length just a tiny bit, and that was all I needed Perfect. to do. Perfect. That's a very good solution. Yes. Good deal. I know another way. You haven't mentioned, and it's something that I found when I was going through some boxes at my house cleaning my craft room the other day. Uh, I have a box of some. Uh, bear paw quilt blocks that oh, my yes. mother had done and she had some in this box. It was a, it was a UFO uh, that were traced with a little piece of cardboard, oh, yes. traced and hand stitched. Oh. So uh, I'm wondering if anybody is still doing the, the tracing <laughs> method that the templates we mm -hmm. did uh, a number of years ago, but I don't hear about people doing those too many times. That's now. how I started. Do you know, one of the first quilts I made was a trip around the world. Wow. And I traced every single piece to sew wow. those together. Now, I sewed them on the sewing machine, but we didn't have a rotary cutter then. Mm -hmm. Right. Know? So right. the rotary was... cutter is our best friend today. I think so. It's changed the world, hasn't it? Yes. And you know, there's the quilting that we've been doing, but remember back, way back when, we all pretty much started out as like garment sewers. Right? Right? Yes, and, we did. And sewing curtains and sewing things for our houses. And so we did a survey this last week and asked all the quilters, we had over 800 responses about what kind of sewing they did other than quilting. So quilting mm -hmm. aside, what kind of sewing do you do? And one out of every four sews garments still. And one out of every four. One out of that every four. That is great. Isn't that incredible? And again, the other one out of four, so the other girl in the group, she doesn't do any kind of sewing other than quilting. She has no more time for anything but quilting. <laughs> so we definitely have a nice mix of people who still sew. And the most popular sewing projects were crafts. Not so the DIY not one. wardrobe items, right. not garments. So, so garment wasn't their favorite, but half of all quilters so Some fun kind of craft. craft projects. So wow. DIY wins. Well, I've really renewed my interest in garment sewing lately. Yeah. So um, I'd kind of be with the garment sewers. So I must be. <laughs> You're the one in four. One in four. So, That's yeah. okay. Because we have okay. four curls. We got it. Oh, but I thought of those. They were they were doing crafts and making. Well, half half do crafts <laughs> and, and home decor. That's that came in a close second to them. So there's lots of sewing interest out there. And so it was really cool to hear about what they wanted to do. And probably the thing that was the biggest thing we had, um, half of them say they sew regularly, but they're always looking to pick up new techniques. And mm -hmm. isn't that quilters? And We're that's always, us. That's us, right? Absolutely. We're always yes. wanting to learn something new. Now, for Betsy, sure. I think we have time for one quick question. Oh, okay. We had a question from Susie. And she says that whenever she's making her quilt, 
Sometimes she notices when she gets the, to the end after she's set on her borders, she's got this little wave thing going on. And so she wonders what causes that. What do you I think? would say I would say that the borders were too long. You know, we right. get in a habit of cutting a border strip and laying it down and sewing it on the edge of the quilt. Like what the pattern says, the size. Yeah, well, well even a lot of them just cut a border and sew it on. Oh, that's, and just that's almost guarantees a wavy <laughs> edge. Yes. And so what you need to do, and I'll just show you on this quilt quickly, and that is that you want to measure the center of your quilt. And I do it by taking both edges of the quilt and bringing them to the middle. Now, if they meet up, you know your quilt is good and square and straight. If it isn't, you need to go back and look at that. But this is the measurement then that you would cut that border. And you know, that's a really clever way to get the three measurements that you average, which is, you know, what we were taught. And that gives you all that at once. All, right. all at once. And you're, you're seeing about square, too. That, that's just wonderful. If the judges have a quilt on a judging table and they mm -hmm. want to know if it's totally square, they will actually fold the quilt that way to check it out. Oh, that's so, so it's cool. one of those little tests that you can do before you send your quilt in, too. Especially before you send it in to get quilted. That's right. That's a great time to right. fix wavy borders, right? And if, they, if, if, the, if the quilt borders are already on the quilt and it's wavy, then I would suggest blocking the quilt. Mm -hmm. So after it's quilted? Yes. If you get back from the quilter and your borders are waving, yes. you still aren't lost. That's right. right. You, you, you can, can go okay. block it and try to get those to that you wet the quilt down and pin it in place and, and let it dry. And that a lot of times will take care of some of that wave. Wonderful. Does steaming help in a situation like that? It could, depending on how much waviness you mm -hmm. have. Yes. Good. That's cool. Well, we hope you've enjoyed us today here at Quilt Chat. And don't forget, you need to send us your questions. We'd be happy to answer them. Join us every week at 11 o'clock on Wednesday. But you also can find out lots more information about quilting at AmericanQuilter.com. There are a lot of links at the top for Pinterest and Facebook and Shop AQS and iQuilt, all of the things that we do. So. Make a, make a visit to AmericanQuilter.com, and we'll see you next week.